Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, uh, working on another project, and today it is not cars, it is tractor. Uh, a little while ago, maybe two weeks or three weeks ago, I can't even remember now, I uh, got an uh, old, like, 50s Massey Ferguson uh, tractor, and uh, I've been using the crap out of it already, uh, but we did get a little bit of snow, actually, uh, not that long ago, and about a week ago, and... I moved some snow with it, but man, I know I needed some weight in the back, but it was pretty pretty difficult to move snow around with the, uh, the lack of weight in the back. So, I need to take a day off from doing car stuff and uh, do a little tractor work. So, I got all the tools, I got all this, the, the metal that I picked up at uh, my favorite metal yard, Glix, that's outside of Reading, PA, and I think I am ready to build a uh, box for the back of it that I can put some weight in. So. I need to jockey some stuff around, that's half the trouble. Uh, I'm kind of set up for winter and have all my project cars in here um, apart and whatnot. So I need to get the meat truck moved out, move the yellow tee over, I'm going to try and put the tractor in here somewhere and uh, turn the heat on. I uh, have this garage, I have the heat, I should not be working outside. <laughs> so. Uh, it might take me an hour just to move stuff around, but it will be worth it because I will be able to get some work done in the warmth. So uh, we'll get started on that. Hopefully I can whip up something pretty quick that will uh, serve my needs for getting some weight in the back and making it easier to move heavy things around. Got the meat truck going here, and we're gonna try and get the tractor going. Uh, the tractor is, like I mentioned in another video, it's been rigged up pretty good. Some of the wiring is a little uh, loose here and there. It's been converted to 12 volt. This is kind of funny. I have a, a ballast resistor on order from Amazon for cheap. This one failed, and the guy just jumpered it, and I've been doing it that way. Uh, I have one of these. Uh, Eastwood battery maintain maintainers hooked up to it because I was having problems with me not knowing the tricks of getting it started. Uh, the battery was almost dying when I was going to get it started just for me tinkering with it. Um, so I got one of those hooked up. That's been helping big time because the battery is actually charged because uh, I don't think it was run very much when the guy was using it. This is the little trick that they got set up. Uh, a little wire that is hooked to the choke rod here because it doesn't hold itself open when it's cold so it's kind of just twisted around there I uh, gotta figure something out with that but it's actually been working okay so I am going to uh, try and get this thing to start here and hopefully it doesn't fight me too much and uh, with it being this cold out
All right, so I don't pretend to be a tractor expert, so you guys be easy on me if I uh, don't say the right terms or I'm doing something that uh, isn't the norm if you're into this stuff. So, uh, but I like documenting all this junk I'm getting into. So, uh, versus some of the old early Ford car stuff, I know a lot of what I'm talking about. This, not so much, but I could weld and I like old stuff. So. Uh, what I think from looking at some photos is on the back here uh, on these bars I can uh, because they do obviously go up and down uh, seems like a lot of guys put uh, their weight boxes in the back and that seems to work well we can put pins out here to attach it and uh, and that will help it lift up the uh, the box so it's up off the ground and um, it is uh, putting some weight on the back end, and we can lift and raise, raise and drop it, and take it off when we don't need it. Uh, for me, I'm going to probably be using it quite often because really, why I want this tractor is for the bucket, so I need this weight in the back to get some traction. Uh, so what I think is, I measured in between here. I think I'm going to build a box that kind of fits uh, in this area right here and goes to about uh, the height of the rear seat, about three feet up. Is kind of what I'm thinking. So I should be able to build it on the ground so that I can put the pins through here and uh, put the pins in and then I can raise everything up and that'll get it up off the ground but I can easily set it down and I don't have to have a hoist or anything to lift up this big heavy weight here. So uh, I'm going to start taking some measurements. Uh, I'm going to use that angle iron that I got and you saw me unload. I'm going to get some of that heavy angle iron to make kind of the perimeter frame. Then I'm going to use some uh, eighth inch plate to uh, box it all in to create you know an actual box for the all around it and uh, then I also got some uh, bracing box tubing to go around the center of it uh, that I may uh, may use to kind of weld or fixture other things to like putting a hitch or something like that on it uh, I may be able to do that so for now let's get the perimeter frame going get the, all the, the plate in place and that will get us kind of moving in the right direction
All right, so I got the, uh, the little cube here made, and uh, I'm using uh, this angle iron to kind of create the outer uh, perimeter of this block, and uh, that will give it a lot of its strength. Uh, so I have almost every uh, clamp, welding clamp I have here, these Eastwood welding clamps I use, uh, I have a ton of them laying around. I have just about every one I have uh, that isn't on other vehicles and projects in here is allocated to this. But it's kind of necessary to get everything to stay where you need it to be and be really close. Now what I can do is wheel the welder over and uh, I can kind of tweak this thing as I tack everything in place and get it sitting so it's, so it's much more square. Uh, and then uh, we should be good to start moving on to the next step to make uh, some of the bracing around the outside perimeter of it, and then where we're gonna actually be hooking the pins to, they're gonna actually hook to these, uh, to the back bars here to actually lift it up. But uh, I am going to try and get everything kind of tacked together before I really weld it all up and lock it in. Uh, but I need to kind of twist and tweak this thing to get it all to sit just right so everything's pretty square. And uh, that's gonna take just a little bit of uh, old-fashioned elbow grease as we go around and tack everything. But I'm going to use the MiG-175 on this to uh, weld it all up. Not doing anything real crazy here. It's just some tractor repair, so it's kind of nice to just quick hit everything with the grinder and uh, just crank the, the MiG welder up and just uh, burn some steel. So I'm going to get this uh, all tacked together here. We can move on to the next step. All right, so we got the whole uh, box all tacked up and uh, we're ready to move on to start making some of the bracing and some of the additions I'm doing to this box. So uh, I looked at some other boxes that were online that guys were making and a really neat idea that I saw a couple guys do was they added a trailer hitch receiver to the bracing in the back of theirs and I think I want to do that. So uh, I got some box tubing when I was at the metal yard and I got a piece uh, that we cut down that is about the just a little larger than what I need my hitch to go into. So we cut a notch out here so that this can fit up in like this. And we're going to fit that up in, weld it all the way around, weld it on the back side. We're gonna probably put some little braces in that will be for the safety chains if you needed to use them. But really I just needed to jockey trailers around in the, uh, in the driveway. Uh, sometimes it's, it might be a little quicker to use the tractor. So uh, I'm not gonna be hauling something for long distance. So we'll put some little braces in there um, and just add the holes for safety chains. We got all these braces around the outside in which will keep everything kind of contained and also locks it all in for this, this little area here. So uh, we're going to grind everything smooth, get it all prepped for welding and then start tacking some of this in and then we can move on to actually putting the, uh, the pins in through the box tubing on the side for actually being able to lift the whole box up. Uh, so moving along, a lot of measuring, a lot of cutting, sanding, all that mess, but uh, we should have something to see. Alright, so we got uh, the hitch section all kind of tacked in place, we're happy with it. Now we need to work on this top link here to, that will help support it uh, when we lift everything up. We can, we can draw it tight with this. 
and that will help. So we've already kind of sorted out. I went to just the tractor su supply and got some of these hardware. Now this can actually uh, slide up in. We took some box tubing that we cut apart, notched, so that this link will fit over. We're gonna drill a hole that will go through and a bolt or pin will go through there. And then we can draw this by turning the center turnbuckle. We can draw this tight so that it kind of pulls some pressure back so when we lift it, it keeps it stabilized. And uh, once we get that drilled and in, we can tack all this in and then we can test the up and down movement of this and see if our, uh, if our idea actually works. I can't wait to just move the thing around. So, getting close. sees rusty junk and thinks he can run wild. And rusty that junk is all we see for miles. We're back at Matt's favorite junkyard. Yeah. <clears throat> what are we in search for today? Today we are looking for plate because I miscalculated how much eighth inch plate we needed. We need some for, for boxing the T-frame and we also need a little more to fix this, finish this box. And go to the plate steel department. So there's some pretty decent stuff over here. Oh, it's dip on aisle. We're in the thick aisle. So this is the beauty of Glicks. There is everything you could possibly need for nothing you ever need. Put it all in the memory bank. There's these stompers everybody asked about my chassis table. That I have those cool little stompers that raise it up and you can adjust them. This metal yard has them just sitting, so you just find a set of four that match, and you have adjustable stops or lifts for your table. The biggest wheels for oh, everything, media balls, for tumblers, and we're currently exploring their stainless aisle. Galvanized fittings.
box built and now we need to put weight in it. Uh, so a lot of guys fill these with concrete. Uh, I have a bunch of scrap metal laying around and friends that have lots of junk they need to get rid of. Uh, I scored a free I-beam that was supposed to be not that big and then I got it and it's huge. It's huge. It's uh, probably 400 pounds and it's quite thick. So we need to cut it in half because it's way too long and then we can stand up the two sections in the box. So we're going to see how this cuts. I have the Eastwood Versica plasma cutter cranked all the way to FU power and we're going to see uh, see if it can cut. It might take a couple tries but it's quicker than trying to use a sawzall or something like that. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> I'm impressed. I use this thing all the time, but I'm so impressed with the power. Alright, so I got half of it cut. I'm starting to cut the other side. One thing to mention when you're using a plasma cutter, the air pressure is what actually uh, forces the, the molten metal or the slag out of the way and you need that air pressure to punch through. So you do need a decent compressor to keep up with it because I'm running uh, traditionally, the Eastwood Versa cuts, I think they say to max it out at like 50 or 60. I'm actually running it a little over that. It's 70 or 80, so that when I'm making these long cuts, the compressor is actually putting out around, it's leveling out at around the 60 or 70 mark. And you got to go slow. You can't move like you're cutting sheet metal. So you'll watch as I'm going. I'm watching what's happening, making sure that it's punching through, and we're not just basically welding the backside of the piece up. Uh, when the molten metal kind of you know drops down so uh, almost through this top half here Ready to break. <laughs> Danger. You have your steel toes on, right? No, that's anticlimactic. Nah. Yeah. Man, that was way easy. Look at that freaking cut, man. That's serious. Your dad's gonna talk shit. You should have done it with a torch. I know. Torches are better than plasma cutters. Wow, that was really anticlimactic. I was hoping for something more exciting. I feel like I'd get hurt. <laughs> There's a pile of leaves right here, and nothing caught on fire. Strategic. It's like the safety squint. You're exactly. really good at it, shooting the sparks just at the right angle. How are we going to get famous on YouTube if nothing catches on fire in a video? Yeah, I don't know. We're going to have to try harder next time. Maybe your house. Maybe. <laughs>
fuel on? Yep. For once. All right, so box is mounted, and uh, we lifted it up, and pretty much like everything I do that I don't plan very well, it's one of my not good traits. Uh, <laughs> this thing has too much, it's on the border of too much weight, so it lifts pretty slow, and it bleeds down. Again, I'm not a tractor guy. You guys are probably gonna comment the new tractors and be like, you idiot, you need to add more fluid. I, I don't really know, we just got to lift it. We just got it done and it drops pretty quickly. It's having a little bit of trouble, not trouble, it lifts pretty slow. So what I need to do is definitely chain it up so that it stays up so when I let the clutch out, it's not, um, it's not dropping as soon as I let the clutch out, which is what it's basically doing now. But it does work, it's up, when I'm driving around you can definitely feel that it, it feels a little more planted when you're riding the, the uh, tractor around. It's a little easier to steer too because the rear end is, is uh, got some weight on the back. So it should definitely help, especially when I start moving uh, snow around, this is going to be a big time help. Uh, one thing that we have to reconsider or figure out a little something different is the hitch idea worked pretty good, but the problem is, is that when we have it up, it really wants to be all the way up, which is going to lift the tractor or the trailer pretty high. So it may not be as good of an idea as I thought. Whoops. But it works. It's on. It's a big step. And uh, that's pretty much it. A lot of work for making a box, basically. But hey, whatever. It was fun. It cost like around 100 bucks for all the material. All the junk that we have in here was free. I didn't have to mix up like 50 bags of cement and like a swimming pool's worth of water, so that was a win. You forgot to mention what's actually in there. Oh yeah, what's in here? So for added effect, we threw things that were laying around the garage other than the i -beam. So we have a hemi block that I've been trying to sell that has a giant hole in it. Uh, we went to an estate earlier this summer and got a bunch of hemi stuff and it was Got a pretty large fist size hole in one of the bores. Everybody online when I posted it was like, oh my God, you could sleeve that, it could be saved. Well, I have had it online all summer for like basically the give it away price. Like I could basically buy dinner for the cost I wanted for it and the rods were worth that. No one got it. So this is what happens, it gets scrapped. I'm not a hoarder, too much. So we got a heavy block in the bottom here, the Soto 330 heavy block. There's a Model A uh, Trans in here that's been riding around the back of my truck for like, since we went to the trailer, the estate where we got the trailer at, and two giant pieces of I-beam. So yeah, it's got plenty of weight in it. Nice thing is, we can take weight out, so if we want, we could take one of these I-beams out. It would probably be not as heavy, but I do want to keep as much weight as I can in it to keep the... Uh, what I can do with the front bucket. So that's all we have for this episode of Iron Tractor Garage. Appreciate you guys following along as always. Uh, we do videos on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. Make sure you subscribe, 
Drop a comment as always. We'd love to hear what you guys have to say for feedback. And uh, make sure you just share with friends so we can get some more people watching us and joining in on the fun. Thanks, guys. Catch you later.